Shaken baby syndrome is the topic uh, for this video. And as the name implies, uh, this is essentially a form of uh, child abuse. And a typical scenario is that you have a baby that's crying and the caregiver gets frustrated and shakes the baby violently. And as a result, since you know the babies are extremely small, even what seems like um, not a very significant level of shaking can cause brain damage in a baby. And there's significant amounts of uh, problems that can occur. This can lead to swelling. Uh, this can also cause bleeding in uh, subdural hematoma. And that uh, basically um, could cause the baby to die. There's other um, physical exam findings, but I just wanted to quickly uh, illustrate the severity of this. Some of the symptoms, well, the symptoms actually initially may present with um, uh, things that are not real, necessarily considered abuse, but when there's a further investigation, it will be more clear. So a baby might be more sleepy or have a seizure and then brought to the hospital. Now, the physical exam may show bruising. There's something called fontanelles. It's like that soft spot in the anterior part of the skull. Well, the fontanelles will be full. And the reason for that is that the uh, pressure inside the skull is elevated because of the damage and the swelling. And that causes these fontanelles to become full. Um, when the baby is shaken, the brain can become damaged and swollen, and there even can be bleeding because of the sub subdural hematoma, and all that can lead to increased intracranial pressure. That's a very important finding on the, on a baby, um, which is the opposite of dehydration, by the way. In dehydration, the fontanelles would be sunken, but this is of course, talking about um, shaken baby syndrome. Another key finding on a physical exam is when you're looking in the eyes, you'll see something called retinal hemorrhages. And this is a very uh, characteristic finding. Um, basically, the small blood vessels have ruptured. And uh, this is a very significant some of the diagnostic tests that are done involve um, x-rays, um, blood tests as well, um, but the x-rays are done to um, see if there's any broken bones, um, most commonly ribs um, are broken in children that have shaken baby syndrome. They're also if the child is developing seizures and um, significant neurologic problems, a CT of the head would be warranted. And that would be actually how you check for the subdural hematoma. So as you can see, it's pretty significant. Now the treatment, of course, the treatment involves, uh, you know, treatment is guided by what problems the baby is presenting with but generally speaking it's an ICU admission um, you know child protective services are contacted and as I mentioned you know if the patient uh, is having seizures that's treated if the patient has broken bones then that's treated I mean the rest of the treatment is really guided uh, specifically to the actual problems. So let's take a look at some cl clinical vignettes, see what this looks like. Two month old infant, previously healthy, presents to the emergency room with seizure and difficulty breathing noted by his father. Mother went, went to work and left the infant with her husband and infant's three year old sibling. Uh, father states that he put the infant down for a nap and found him one hour later having a seizure. Father called the mother to find out what to do and she instructed him to call the emergency services 
Emergency medical technicians found the infant pale, bradycardic, intubated the child at the scene. In a community hospital, lorazepam was given to control the ongoing seizure activity, physical exam, unremarkable except neurologic exam, which reveals brisk reflexes in Glasgow coma scale of 10 out of 15. Ophthalmologic exam reveals bilateral multilayer retinal hemorrhages. Skeletal survey reveals multiple rib fractures and three classic metaphysial fractures. Which of the, which of the following is most likely diagnosis? Um, the thing is, the febrile seizure, um, if it was just a febrile seizure by itself, a seizure because of a fever, you wouldn't have all these other physical exam findings, so it's probably not that. Vitamin K deficiency can present with, you know, bleeding and bruising, but this is much more severe. Rickets, you know, vitamin deficiency, again, wouldn't probably present with something this specific. So that takes us down to two. Now, osteogenesis imperfecta is also known as brittle bone disease. And what that is is a, a, a person who's basically prone to fractures. Um, so what a person who has this will have multiple fractures throughout their life for the smallest reasons. I mean, they will break their bones so easily. And that can sometimes be um, misdiagnosed as uh, child abuse. Um, but this patient also has retinal hemorrhages and seizure activity, which would most likely not be osteogenesis imperfecta. So by process of elimination and choosing the best answer, most likely diagnosis, it's shaken baby syndrome. And then one more. A three-month-old infant is brought to a pediatrician's office because of increased lethargy and irritability. When asked about the cause of bruises on the baby's shoulders, the parents state that the child rolled off the couch and fell off fell on the floor one day prior to presentation. Um, his parents report that the child has been previously healthy and is up to date on vaccinations. He has been meeting his developmental milestones. His fontanelles are full. While in the office, the patient develops a tonic-clonic seizure. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step? Ordering a CT is actually very expensive. Um, performing a lumbar puncture is very invasive. Administering IV uh, medication is also invasive and is this this is a pediatrician's office so generally speaking you know they don't char usually don't start IV medications in an office uh, this is a obviously a blood test so you would have to draw the blood so even if you didn't know anything about this question just by looking at what's the least expensive and least invasive it would be just look in the, pa the baby's eyes but that is the correct answer but it's the correct answer obviously for more important reasons and that is in shaken baby syndrome what happens is you have this brain damage and um, that can cause and you might even have bleeding bleeding and swelling so that can cause the increased intracranial pressure and that intracranial pressure is why the fontanelles become full and that is right here. Now, that's one very, very telltale sign. Now, they're basically saying, is there any other telltale sign that you can look for? And that is definitely in the eye exam. If you ha perform a retinoscopic exam, you may see retinal hemorrhages. And that is also very, very characteristic of shaken baby syndrome.